Hello, hello everyone. Now, before I get into this tier 10 IGN Heavy Cruiser Azuma, uh, let me mention something. On Sunday, the 23rd of December, I was planning on doing this big Christmas giveaway on my stream to like celebrate Christmas. I was gonna give away like twin, twin, 28 Santa crates, uh, I was gonna give away a couple of tier 8 premiums, I was gonna give away a Prince Eitel Friedrich, and I mentioned it on my stream, and then Jingles, who was watching my stream, said, hey, you know what? I could join you on Sunday. So he's gonna join me on Sunday as well, and he's also gonna, gonna give away a Prince Eitel Friedrich, and he's gonna give away a Massachusetts, and a USS Kid, and a couple Smiths, and some gold. So, on this upcoming Sunday, my stream, we're gonna have a massive celebration, a happy Merry Christmas celebration, where we just give away a ton of stuff. So, if you enjoy watching my stream, uh, tune in on Sunday and you guys will be getting a lot of loot given away by both me and Jingles who will be joining me. Anyway, let's move on to the commentary itself after this brief sellout. The Azuma, or Project B65 Super Type A Cruiser, as it was historically known, has finally made it to World of Warships. Uh, now, what's kind of a funny little tidbit is that the B-65s were intended to counter the threat posed by American Alaska-class cruisers. So, I I'm gonna give a little nod to Wargaming here, considering they're, they're planning to introduce this ship right after the Alaska is becoming available. So, <laughs> literally releasing the counter, or the, the historical counter to the Alaska right after Alaska itself. The ship itself sits at a very powerful 71.8k health, uh, which is honestly only a few hundred less than what the Stalingrad has. It's got like 72,450 or something like that. The armor is, however, vastly different. While the Stalingrad enjoys thick 50mm armor, capable of bouncing every type of AP as long as it remains angled, the Azuma is coated in much thinner armor. The entire bow and stern is, uh, well, besides a small section of the rudder, is 25mm armor. That means that even 380mm guns will overmatch your armor. The upper belt and the deck armor is 30mm, which means you're vulnerable to Republic, Yamato, Musashi of course, and to the handful of 455, uh, 457mm Conqueror players that are out there. Not too many, I assume. So, this reduced armor, of course, obviously means that you're also more susceptible to HE spam as pretty much every single cruiser in the game can pen you. Light cruisers with IFHE and all the heavy cruisers will have no issues just dealing raw damage to your ship. The citadel is also quite high above the waterline, uh, reaching halfway to the top deck. It has some interesting angles as well as some solid armor, letting you bounce a fair amount of AP when you do get overmatched or penned, but close range overmatches and broadsides usually get punished very heavily in this ship. Uh, I'll show you the citadel uh, after this game and when I show you my recommended build and some other stats of the ship. The torp belt is 22% with the full build, which is okay for a cruiser. I mean, I think the Moskva has like 28%, but whatever, that's Moskva. The handling isn't honestly much more merciful. The speed is good at 35.7 knots with the speed flag, but the large size greatly affects the turning circle, leaving it, leaving it at 920 meters. In comparison, the Yamato has a turning circle of 900, so this one has literally a 20 meter larger turning circle than the Yamato itself. If you run the rudder shift module, like I do in this vid, uh, you can cut the rudder shift time down to 11.1 .1 seconds, which is pretty acceptable. Now, all hope is not lost. This might sound pretty awful, but it has one great thing working in its favor when it comes to survivability, and that's stealth. The single most important thing pretty much in the game when it comes to surviving. If they can't see you, they can't shoot you. With the full concealment build, you can reach a rather impressive 11.6 km surface spotting range. This is extremely useful, uh, as it allows you to go dark and move under radar when necessary. Combined with the solid speed of the ship, it honestly makes the ship pretty agile on the field, and in this case, for example, this Azuma coming around a corner, giving broadside, you, you'll get an example of the vulnerable citadel here, and of course, of the stealthiness of the ship. You can just move with your speed under the radar, and this guy is a rain player, so obviously quite experienced, and I was still able to catch him completely off guard. Only two citadels, but it does give you an idea. A battleship would have obviously done even more there. So, 
you can just pop out at 12 kilometers and just blast unsuspecting foes. Overall, I have been satisfied with the survivability of this ship and I consider it quite tanky, even with the issues with size, armor and turning circle and citadel. And now, of course, the most important thing, the bread and butter of the ship is naturally the nine 310mm guns arrayed in a pretty familiar fashion of six guns in the front, three in the back. These guns are very good. The dispersion is satisfying and very consistent. Now, while you might lack the improved penetration angles of the Alaska or the Stalingrad, the AP is still solid. With the reload mod, you can cut down the reload to 15.8. You can cut it down further with uh, Adrenaline Rush, of course, uh, but 15.8 seconds. Add in Expert Loader, and it allows you to switch ammo type in less than 8 seconds. Which, once again, combined with the stealthiness, uh, is very useful, as you can ambush both cruisers and destroyers alike. The penetration on the AP is also very good. Uh, I've been able to citadel cruisers at practically any range. I think I just citadel the Des Moines at like 20 kilometers the other, the, uh, just the, the other game. The HE hits extremely hard. At 5.1k base alpha, well, I'm having some issues hitting this guy. He, he made a full stop to juke a bunch of shells, but it kind of backfired because when he made a full stop, it allowed us to catch up, and now he can't use his stealth to disengage. 11.6, and we're within 10, or the battleship is within 10, so he will not be able to outrun us. Anyway, the HE hits very hard. 5.1k base alpha, combined with the consist consistent dispersion, well, pretty consistent dispersion, uh, make, really makes the ship feel like an oversized Zao at times, capable of lobbing this hard-hitting HE with a 27% fire chance at any target. Add in the fact that the guns are 310mm in caliber, and you realize that this ship has an HE pen of 51mm, meaning it can consistently damage the likes of tanky ships like Stalingrad, Moskva, Grosse Kurfurst, even Kaba, that has that 50mm plating on the broadside. I'll demonstrate that later. Add in that the shell velocity is 836 meters per second across both types of ammo, and you'll find yourself using both very often. Not as fast as Stalingrad shells, not as slow as uh, Alaska shells. The third traverse is very sluggish for a cruiser. Note that I am running the 3 million reload module, which obviously slows it down a bit, but I'm also running Expert Marksman, and I still have a turret traverse of 35.6 seconds. And you'll see towards the end of this gameplay example, it can significantly limit your ability to switch between targets as you feel. Um, on the other hand though, the 19.1 km range, with an added spotter plane on top, uh, means that you have great flexibility on the battlefield. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a bad map or not, you don't really have that many bad maps in Dazuma. You feel very comfortable on almost all maps. I should mention it as I'm trying get, gonna start setting some fires on this Taiho since he's a bit of a threat. The AA on the ship is solid. In fact, if you build for it, you will find that it's very good. Running the dispersion mod, as I'm doing in this commentary, you have a 3.7, 4.2 and 6km range on your different auras. The ship needs this AA badly though, as the well-protected citadel I mentioned, uh, it has over 100mm armor on top of the citadel. And this is actually not that good of a thing, because it means you arm all AP bombers in the game. And let me tell you, if you combined large size with large citadel, and the ability to arm AP bombers, you realize that this ship is actually very susceptible to AP, different types of AP bombers. Now, AP bombers in general are kind of broken. I like they are they are overpowered. They are they are just a horrible gameplay element. Uh, so I'm not sure how much of a negative I consider being vulnerable to them too, uh, since I mean Des Moines also gets one shot by them. Uh, but it's still something worth keeping in mind. You are this ship is absolutely vulnerable to AP bombers. Overall, though. I've loved playing this ship. It's really, really fun. Uh, the concealment and speed allows you to keep mobile on the field. Uh, if you, you re if you do overextend, you can of course be in trouble, but uh, in general it allows you to stay mobile on the field and pick your fights. The turret angles aren't the best, but they're not the end of the world either. You can see that how I'm able to shoot all three turrets with the angle I'm holding right now. So you are able to push quite consistently in with the ship and uh, just rein in the fire on your targets. With no radar, you never really feel obligated to hold any certain key point or position. The great range and honestly the cons consistently good HE and AP uh, encourage ammo switching often. And I've felt to, uh, like a threat to every single ship in the game. 
On the other hand, lack of radar and sluggish turning circle means torpedo boats are a big threat. <laughs> With a 920 meter turning circle and quite a squishy uh, torpedo belt and honestly large size, you're obviously, you will end up hitting torps at some point. You can mitigate it by switching to hydro, but then you open up other risks like carriers. So it's kind of hit and miss, come and go, which one you want to choose. Um, HE spammers can also easily punish you, on, like I've, I've had great fun blapping cru cruisers left, right and center, but on the other hand, if I get caught with some cruiser able to spam me, the damage they deal is consistently high, especially Wooster, Haragoma, the likes of those, you don't really have any radar to counter them, and if they're just sitting behind island, whatever, spamming you, your flat arcs has, will struggle shooting back over those same islands. So, once again, it comes and goes, your strength slash weaknesses. If you rush BBs, well, that's kind of what I'm doing here. In fact, you might notice that I'm trying to chase down, my team is kind of throwing, my team is dying all around me, so I'm playing very aggressive here. I want to try to finish off this carrier, get the kill. He had damage con sadly, so I'm not going to be able to finish him, but I'm hunting down this Kaba, and at the same time, I'm rushing this Mus Musashi. Now, rushing battleships is obviously risky because they can easily overmatch your armor, and they can e easily punish that large citadel. And if you do overextend, well, you s well, that was 14, almost 15k straight through the nose. I pop defensive AA here soon if those planes get closer, and you will see the power of the AA as well. Um, this is Rushing BBs is obviously very risky, but on the other hand, if you do get close enough, uh, your gun damage is so disgusting against battleships. You have no issues citadeling the likes of them. I pop defensive AA just in case to get rid of the planes. I managed to angle enough to bait him into shooting my broadside armor, and I bounce a significant amount of his AP. And here I get a bit impatient. I want to shoot the front citadel, but I think I pulled the trigger about one second too early, and I get a bunch of bounces, and I only get one citadel. I turn in though, my goal is to outturn his turtlers, because he actually has very slow turrets. So I'm lining up on his citadel, and at this close range, I can punch straight through his belt, and I hit him for 31k. Then I line up my back turret for his angled uh, octagon-shaped back citadel, and I punch through the side there, and I get the citadel as well. At this point, he is very angled now. Uh, so I'm gonna aim for his superstructure and the side of his turret as well, see if I can knock the turret out of action, which will that make life a lot easier. I, I'm about to turn in and get his broadside, but then I see that the Yu Yang is crazily enough torping us both, so I'm gonna have to angle away, I go for the back, the same citadel weakness that is in the front exists in the back as well, so I punch through that, weak, that weakness and citadel him through the back as well, and then I try to turn away, my engine gets knocked out, so I damage con trying to dodge the remaining torpedoes, but the Yu Yang was so good at landing these that he actually lands a second torp. And now I have a broken rudder and a full broadside to a Kaba. And worst thing is, the Kaba understands to switch to AP and we are losing a lot of health. I'm down to 4k health, 3.5k. I finally get undetected. That great concealment, I'm down to 2.4k health. I'm slowly turning in, I get spotted again. He comes out of the smoke, trying to rush me. I keep turning in, I keep turning in. The broken rudder is helping me turn 1.2k health, and I get my heal off. I'm down to 800 health when I finally get my heal off. I was basically spamming the button, and my rudder finally gets fixed, and I'm able to turn in completely against him. And the Kaba, as I mentioned, normally has that 50mm plating that can bounce or shatter HE, but against the Azuma with 51mm of HE pen, well... Watch what happens when he tries to use that plating against me. Yep. That dispersion plus that raw HE alpha is disgusting and he gets absolutely blapped by it. We're down to two versus two and I want to make sure I can finish this guy. Kill off the cover. I'm worried he torpedoed. I'm worried he torpedoed. The planes are near me so there's a chance that the planes might have spotted the torps but they did reduce the plane spotting of torpedoes by 50% so at this point I could turn in and just kill the Taiho but we're gonna play it safe and we're gonna secure the win here so I'm allowing my turrets to slowly turn you can see how sluggish the turret traverse is and it is an issue at times I shoot but at this point it's actually too late and the game runs out so he does survive the battle still though 
Looking at the scoreboard, um, this was a 261,000 damage game, uh, and you get to see a bit of everything. I fought some cruisers, I fought some battleships, I fought some destroyers, a bit of AA, a bit of everything mixed in. More importantly though, the power of the guns cannot be denied. No, you do not have to improve the AP angles, that, that, that does not mean that the guns are bad. No, they are very, very good. And the, even the squishiness is not really that big of a deal. It's In fact, I think it's one of the tankiest cruisers out there. Team score wise, 2.8k uh, basic speed, which is quite nice. The fourth kill on the Taiho would have been nice, but eh, you can't get it all. I'll still take it. It's patch day, so the gameplay across the board will obviously always be a bit questionable. In fact, uh, moving on to detailed report, we will find that, well, the AP and HE damage is almost identical, even though I shot so much less AP, but I shot at the times where I was pretty much guaranteed heavy damage, so it was such a large chunk of Citadel damage that kind of inflated it. Still, uh, uh, the fires, 86,000 fire damage. And that's something you will find yourself getting a lot. You will find yourself getting a lot of raw HE damage because of the improved penetration, and you will also find yourself starting a lot of fires because 27% fire chance combined with a 15.8 second reload means that it is kind of like the Zao. In fact, one of my viewers jokingly called it the Mac Zao because it's a super-sized Zao. And <laughs> looking back at it, I kind of agree. He has a pretty fair point. A very fun and very strong ship, though. Let me show you guys uh, the port. I can show you the camos as well as the armor and citadel model on the ship since they are quite unique. Right, let me actually start by showing you guys the armor model. So, as I mentioned, every single part of the nose is 25 millimeters. So obviously very easily overmatchable. The same thing applies to the stern. Besides this small plating down here near the rudder, everything else is also overmatchable. The rest of the armor is 30 millimeters and 30 millimeters, which means good enough against everything except Republic, and 457 Konk and Yamata Musashi. They will be able to overmatch and ignore this armor. Now this might look thin, but this is just the uh, torpedo bulge. And if we get rid of it, you can see that there's actually the Citadel armor behind it. Now don't, think, don't be fooled into thinking it's any sort of special effective spaced armor, since it's so thin that most will just overmatch it anyway. The Citadel itself, as I mentioned, uh, extends quite high above the waterline. And even though it does have some funky angles, which allow you to get some trolley bounces at times, if you do give broadside in this, thing, in this thing, well, it's basically almost a flat broadside, and you will absolutely get citadeled. Also, same thing if you try to push nose in and you get overmatched by a battleship, there's a lot of citadel to hit here, and it's a very flat surface to hit as well. So, you, and the same thing when sailing away as well. So, a vulnerable citadel, absolutely, and quite thinly armored across the board. The turrets have been quite survivable. I haven't really gotten turrets knocked out often at all, so I've been quite satisfied with how well these, sh the, these guns are protected. Moving on to the build itself. Consumable-wise, there's not really much to change between. You can go Hydro versus Defensive, uh, but honestly, because of your extreme vulnerability to AP bombers, this, this great armored roof here uh, means that you arm every single AP bomber in the game. So, well, you can go Hydro, but you do it at your own risk. And considering the AA values are quite good, um, it feels like a, like a bit of a waste. On the other hand, though, your rudder shift, as I mentioned, and turning circle is also bad. So if you don't feel confident dodging the torps without Hydro, I'll leave this one up to you. There are uh, upsides and downsides to both of them. Spotter plane, not much choice here, and uh, of course the heal. I recommend premium damage con and premium heal as the two priorities. Oh, and did I just press battle? I did. Tell me I can leave. Thank you, UI. <laughs> My bad. I meant uh, I meant to click uh, upgrades, I think. I don't know why I clicked battle. Probably I've been streaming like seven hours today, so uh, I'm a bit out of it. I apologize, my dudes. Uh, <laughs> Upgrade-wise, I go for the main armaments mod. Uh, spotting aircraft mod might be an option, but honestly, having the turrets knocked out is probably a bigger issue. But to be fair, I haven't really had them knocked out, so as I mentioned, this is a preview. I need to play more to decide if I, I actually want to switch this out. Like, can I do without this thing, or is it a must-have when you go in and brawl the Musashi or Yamato, Yamato or whatever? We have to decide. Ultimately, though, I'm running a very basic build, which is main armaments, 
additional tankiness because your rudder and steering well your rudder only gets knocked out if you eat torps to the stern uh, which we just saw such a good example of better dispersion I mentioned that if you queue with a carrier, the AA is actually quite monstrous if you slot the AA guns mod, since you can bolster these auras to 7.2 and uh, what, 4 point something. I can actually show you guys, why not? While I'm doing it, I might as well show you. This is a preview, it's not that serious. 7.2, 5.1 and 4.4. So the auras are quite impressive here. Uh, and of course, with the defensive AA bolstering them, you are able to shred planes quite well. Keep in mind that manual AA will double this value as well. With defensive AA adding 200%, it becomes very strong. Faster rudder shift because, well, you don't really want to sit there tanking the HE, you want to maneuver, you want to move on the map. And because you have such a vulnerable citadel and already sluggish rudder shift, I don't really like being caught broadside too often in this thing. Better concealment because that's one of your strengths and faster reload on the guns at the cost of some turret traverse. Captain perks wise, I actually really like this build. Uh, priority target, adrenaline rush, superintendent, concealment expert, very standard so far, and uh, expert marksman. After this, I would go expert loader because you end up switching ammo types so often and AFT for that AA power. I did try an AA build, which was very strong. And in that case, I gave up the turret traverse and I gave up um, jack of all trades and I slotted manual AA as well, just to double this aura here. And it just shredded planes. So the Azuma has some flexibility here. You can also go a very tanky build, I assume, in which case you would go for fire prevention instead of AFT. For clan battles, for example, where there's not, not going to be any carriers, I can easily see people giving up advanced firing training just to go fire prevention instead. So there's, there's a lot of different builds and flexibility available here, and uh, all of them have been very fun to play. In general, the ship has just been very fun to play. Flag-wise, it's going to be pretty standard here. Uh, we're going to be running, of course, heal, uh, fire India Yankee for reduced fire duration, additional speed, faster cooldown, and uh, better AA. So this has been like the standard setup after that econ uh, economy flags. Let me actually show you guys the camo because it looks quite good. So this is the default camo. This is the default camo on the Zuma. And then you can, of course, modify the colors to this one. Oh, that's pretty interesting. This port maybe doesn't do it the best of justice, but eh, it's okay. Not really that special. Personally, I think I was just running. I might just run New Year Streamer. I actually quite like this camera. It looks pretty spicy. Anyway, that was my initial preview, initial impression of the Azuma. Um, now what I have to do is decide if the ship is too powerful. Because, as I mentioned, this ship is very fun. And I think it's quite strong. Now comes the now I need to play the ship a lot more to decide if it's too strong. Because honestly, I really don't want another Stalingrad where basically a ship like the Moskva is gets completely ignored and pushed aside, and basically it doesn't even see any competitive play anymore because everyone is playing Stalingrad instead. And I don't want the Azuma to offset, for example, the Zhao, or a more realistic case of who it might offset is the Henry. Because the, spe the spe specialty, wow, English is hard. The specialty of the Henry is, of course, you, you build IFHE, so you get that improved penetration. With IFHE, you can pen that magical uh, 50 millimeters of armor. I, I'm actually not running it on this captain, it's on my Russian captain, but you can pen over 50 millimeters of armor, and that makes it a very good Stalingrad counter for competitive. Uh, but the Azuma can already do it without needing IFHE and it's got that additional tankiness and great conceal and it's got pretty decent speed, I don't know. Um, we're gonna have to see, we're gonna have to play this ship a lot more before I can decide what I feel, but it's certainly a strong ship, make no mistake, it's not a weak ship and it's super fun to play and in its current state it absolutely gets my recommendation. Now I have to decide if we have balance or not. Thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys later, I hope you guys enjoyed this preview.